Hi everyone, welcome back to this series of Agile Questions and Answers, ideal for your PMP exam or your Agile Certified Practitioner exam, or even just testing your knowledge of Agile with your teams for a little bit of fun. Let's get, let's get into the questions. You're working as an Agile project manager in a new project team. Many project team members are despondent and do not show up for the meetings and ceremonies that you have set. Okay, this is, uh, this is a, a worrying sign in an Agile team. What will you do next? Uh, because the reason why Agile works is because we have everyone together interacting really, really quickly and frequently. Uh, so if people aren't showing up, you know, we're not going to get the results that we actually want. So let's see how we can deal with this or, or you know, work through this. Raise a risk in the risk register around project goals and ask the project sponsor to mitigate the risk. Look, you probably do this in a waterfall project. Uh, you know, people might uh, technically you know, run a risk meeting, you know, raise that risk, make a big deal out of it, uh, and get someone to take action on that risk. Um, but in Agile, I think we'll take something different. Uh, so let's see what else we've got here. Have a coaching session with the team, uh, teaching the what and the why behind Agile ceremonies, and ensure each meeting has a clear outcome, time, and agenda. Uh, I like that one, definitely with the team meetings, keeping a clear agenda, make sure that people understand why we're doing this. Starting with why, you know, the, the Simon Sinek book, Start With Why, uh, starting with that first level idea, that high level idea, it's quite important uh, and you know, that really can help. So that's a probable one for me. Um, cancel all meetings for now and write some documentation for the team on what you'd like them to do. No uh, documentation, we prefer interacting over documentation as you know from the Agile Manifesto uh, and we definitely still want the meetings, whatever we want to call them, ceremonies, catch-ups, uh, we want people to interact. It's really important, not that one. Uh, and make the decisions for yourself and dictate the outcomes to the team. Now, while that might be easier, uh, it's definitely not going to result in, in the things that we want uh, we're probably not going to get the results for the customer that they want or the for the business that we want or even for the team that they want that they want so really out of all of these the best answer uh, that involves all of the people and a collaborative approach is answer b an agile leader focuses on coaching the team removing blockers and ensuring interaction the key agile ceremonies such as stand-ups sprint reviews and retrospectives help support and improve that work and get the answers that people need that was great. All right, on to the next question. You're an experienced project manager who is used to a directive leadership style where people do exactly as you say. Uh, now you're working in an agile team where this, that style of leadership is not accepted. What is one thing you can change to move to a more servant leadership style? Okay, this is a nice knowledge-based question. Let's see what we've got here. Uh, we can ensure that the executive team makes all the decisions. No, that's more of a directive leadership style. Ensure that stakeholders collectively agree on and share decisions. Uh, yes, I like sharing um, and even collectively, but you know, sometimes we don't all have to agree, but we do have to collectively in, have input into something and problem solve and work through it. So that one's a maybe, but it's looking pretty good. Uh, defer to the product owner and the business to make all the decisions. No, we want to still work through it as a team. We need the input from the developers. We need the input from the testers. We need the input from our business analysts. We need the input from the product owner and we need the iteration manager or the scrum master to be running and uh, you know, facilitating those discussions and ceremonies. Uh, last one, find an extremely competent person in the project team and delegate all the decisions to them. Now, that might happen in the real world. You'll find favorites, you know, uh, not you personally, but uh, an, an executive might have a favorite person that they want in the, in the project. And sometimes that can work and have its benefits, and sometimes it can actually not work, you know, because it's only one person. Either way, that person ideally will still work in a collaborative manner uh, where we're ensuring the stakeholders collectively agree and share those decisions. So either way, I think we're going to go with answer B for this one. And there we are. Agile methods foster team empowerment, which increases stakeholders' need for effective uh, decision making. Yes, that's right. So we're effectively decision making um, by empowering the team, in other words. There are two methods to accomplish this collective agreement where the team agrees with the decision or the approach and a shared decision uh, which means the team and the stakeholders arrive at that decision together rather than one party 
making the project decision. So yeah, basically what we're saying here is we're working together as a team. We're all having input into the decision and into the, into the information uh, that make up the outputs of what we're trying to do. And that's a big part of the Agile approach. All right, on to the next question. You're working on the requirements for the next iteration and this decision needs to be made by the team. The product owner suggests using a show of hands to indicate team members uh, that who are or for or against the decision. As the Agile project manager, you object to this approach. Why? Wow, this is gonna be interesting. Agile is about software. The team should use software to vote for the decision. No, Agile is not necessarily about software. We can actually use low tech tools to manage uh, an Agile team. It can just be a board on the wall or it could be you know, cards uh, moving across lanes uh, made by tape as well on the wall or a whiteboard or anything. Um, so it doesn't have to be about high tech stuff here. The decision may not go in your favor, so it's best just to do it yourself. Uh, even if something, even if we don't agree with something, 100%, as long as everyone has had the right input into the decision, uh, then we have a higher chance of it being the right outcome overall. Sometimes we may be wrong, as hard as that is to admit, uh, but we have to do what's best overall for our customer, not just what's best for ourselves. Decisions should take time to work through and should not be voted on quickly. Not true. Uh, you can still have a fast outcome and a good outcome. Those two things are not necessarily uh, against each other. So that's also not one for us. It has to be the last one then. <laughs> what have we got? By making their decisions visible, team members may be influenced by others in the team, especially executives, without the benefit of discussion. Oh, ah, okay, now this is perfect. And there are a few Agile methods that you'll see that can get around this, um, like, uh, like uh, the Fist of Five, for example. Um, at least with that, if we're voting, then if someone is unsure about the decision, they have a chance to discuss it and give their reasons and then collaborate with the team and figure out uh, you know, which way actually is the best way forward to voice their reasons. But this is absolutely correct. By everyone uh, making their decisions visible, uh, then you can be swayed by others in the team and you may not get the best output. So often um, with, uh, you might have the nominal group technique or anonymous voting uh, where people just write down their decision um, and you can't see who has made that decision. Then you can't be swayed by your boss uh, and you know, that actually can have a really good output, a good, you know, good impact on the decision for your team in other words. So let's go with answer D, answer D. With just a for or against vote, there'll be no discussion that might produce better or alternative decisions for the issue. By making the votes visible, team members are more easily influenced by others' decisions, especially if they report to them outside of the project environment. Has that ever happened to you? You know, I know it's happened in, in my circumstances. You'll see it happen a lot in your career. So that was a great question. All right, let's go into the next one. You're working in a project team who would like to add a few key agile processes to their way of work in their quest to become more agile. The project manager mentions performing root cause analysis when problems appear um, on, on features, uh, focusing on features that bring in the most revenue with pay per use. Okay, wow, a few things here. And daily standups. What agile method is she most likely referring to? Okay, root cause analysis. Uh, Focusing on features that bring in the most revenue with pay per use and daily standups. What method are we referring to? I don't see pay per use in Scrum. I don't see it in Kanban, which is more about uh, work in progress limits uh, and uh, basically making things visual. Iteration planning is just uh, something that's part of most all agile techniques uh, so that we're, you know, we're planning for the next iteration coming up. Um, Really, the the outstanding one is extreme programming, and that has a lot of different principles. So it could be one of those principles. I think we're going to go with answer B, and let's see what they've got. Okay, answer B. Let's see what the explanation is here, because this one was quite tricky for me. Extreme programming has 14 secondary practices a team can focus on, including root cause analysis. Okay, yes, that's good. Uh, and that's a lean technique from way back when, you know, 100 years ago, which is sort of the grandfather or the grandmother of, uh, of agile techniques as well. A lot of them borrowed from lean in the early days. Focusing on features that bring in the most revenue with pay per use. 
Okay, right. So we're focusing on features that have a high value, um, a high benefit value. Okay, that makes sense. So now um, this one has many dollars. So we're gonna do that one first. That's, so that's what we're referring to. Okay, I like that one. Um, daily stand-ups, shrinking teams caused by improvements over time and more. Okay, so it's good to be aware of those, uh, have those extra principles in extreme programming, even if we're not asked something directly on extreme programming, uh, those things will all feed into the principles of Agile in general, because XP is such a big part of Agile. That was a really good question to work through. Okay, let's get into the next one and see what we've got. And I think we're up to the last one for this section. You guys have done great. Uh, an Agile team in your organization would like to include feature-driven development practices into their way of work. You tell them that feature-driven development activities are supported by a core set of software engineering best practices. Okay, so we've got uh, feature-driven, but also engineering best practices. Okay, this is gonna be interesting. What practices will the team start with? Feature releases, feature celebrations, and feature iterations. Uh, while that does roll off the tongue, I don't think that's specifically correct. Developing by feature now. Working in feature teams and visibility of progress and results. I really like this one because what this means is uh, working in feature teams, if you think about this and all of the agile methods and principles that we've gone through, working in feature teams, now the team has a core expertise in this feature. And if they're, if they're delivering for this particular system or, or this particular feature, you know, they're becoming a real expert in that domain and they're, they're gradually getting really, 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 really good at it uh, and becoming an expert in it, in fact. And that helps, helps get faster and get better over time. It's really, really great. Uh, so I like that one at the moment. Finding features, developing features, testing features. Uh, finding features is just a bit weird and different. Um, the other ones are fine, but you know, not specifically agile. And ensuring executive features are allocated and developed. Um, I mean, yes, you do need some sort of, you need ideally to be working with the customer and collaborating with the product owner who prioritizes the features and tells us what is the highest priority to work on. Um, in that way, that's probably, we're doing that more than just uh, developing what the executives want. The, the product owner might be an executive in the business area, um, but that's another story. So that's that's how that works. All of that to say, I really think we're gonna go with answer B here, guys. And there it is. Feature-driven development focuses on the core engineering set of best practices, such as developing by feature, feature teams, inspections, uh, regular builds, the same as extreme programming, right? So uh, regular builds where we're con continuous integration, we're regularly putting that up into one environment and then testing it to see if anything is broken. A visibility of progress, uh, which is our Kanban board. You know, so all of these different things in the different agile methodologies or um, or you know or uh, principles or frameworks, they all are very similar across all of them, aren't they? And that's the point that we're trying to get across here. Uh, so all of that to say, we were correct. You were correct. I hope you did great. I've certainly enjoyed myself and I hope you have too. But more importantly, you are learning so much about Agile, which is one of the, the biggest methodologies that you will see in project management today. And you'll see a lot of terms thrown around um, you know, on, on an ad hoc basis. And you will be able to understand those terms and even uh, understand when people know what they're talking about as well, which is gonna be so great for your own career. I hope to see you in the next video and bye for now.